Welcome viewers to this program on primary prevention of heart disease and the role of universal healing program, popularly known as UHP. According to reports from the Unite of the World Health Organization, coronary heart disease is the number one problem among the young all over the world. Incidence of heart disease in India is probably the highest in the world amongst different countries. We have with us today a panel of experts, all practicing cardiologists, who will share their thoughts on primary prevention of heart disease and other related issues. And I will introduce this trio of highly accomplished professionals to you. We have, we have with us today Dr. Ramesh Kapadia, a consulting cardiologist based in Andabad with over five decades of experience. He is passionate about prevention of heart disease and he got inspired by Dr. Larry Doshi and Dr. Dean Onish, both from the United States, to start the Universal Healing Program more than 26 years ago. He combines the wisdom of the East and the scientific knowledge of the West. We also have with us today Dr. Shubhashan Manchanda, who is a cardiologist and a senior consultant at the Sir Gangaram Hospital in New Delhi. And prior to that, he was the professor and head of department at the All India Medical Inst Institute of Medical Sciences. And he has been practicing for over four decades. And he has done a lot of research in the reversal of heart disease and preventive cardiology. Finally, we have with us Dr. K. R. Balakrishnan, Director of Cardiac Sciences and Chief Cardiothoracic and Transplant Surgeon at the Fortis Malar Hospital in Chennai. He too has over three decades of experience in this field and he is considered one of the best transplant, heart transplant surgeons in India and an expert on the management of end stage heart failure. I welcome all three panelists today and viewers, it's a paradoxical situation that in spite of great advances in medical research, better diagnostics, better availability of healthcare and medicine and a lot of awareness through the media as well as the internet, the incidences of heart disease, not only heart disease, but the other diseases have increased over the years and hence the format of this program will continue in a form of the frequently asked questions by patients and the common man. So let's begin with our questions. And this time we'll begin with Dr. Ramesh Kaparia. Um, what are the guidelines for primary prevention of a heart attack, sir? Well, uh, the primary prevention in a family actually should start right from the age of five, you know, when we should teach our uh, children to play outdoors, to have the you know physical exercises, and uh, then when they grow older, they all again you know they should be taught in the the proper dietetic habits, and then when still when they get get of age, if they have a family history you know or in any case the tobacco use of any any kind, tobacco use of any kind, chewing or smoking, is deleterious that has to be taught right from the right, right from the school days. So normally our thing is that the chubby children with less and less activity and avoid and, 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 and now as uh, our friend you know doctor said you know that now there are less and less facilities for children to play and they try to be indoors with all the various uh, games on the computer or in the, on the internet. So we have really a great problem now in the modern world to prevent the disease right from the childhood, right from the childhood. Dr. Balakrishnan, your views on that? Ch childhood yeah. obesity actually is a problem. Yes. Mm. 30 years ago when we were children, I, I, I think it was unheard of. Mm. And now, uh, also, uh, commercials on TV, you know, they advertise so much of junk food. Yes. Uh, you go to a movie hall, uh, they give combo packs of big mm -hmm. sodas with, which are full of processed sugar, big popcorns with, uh, with so much salt in it. And big helpings. <laughs> big helpings. And increasingly, as I said, uh, we are playing virtual games, but we live in the real world. 
the our health is not virtual is real so uh, the amount of exercise the children get uh, most of us used to walk to school or take a bicycle <laughs> True. now they get dropped uh, and the public spaces actually have been taken up in big urban sprawling cities by all kinds of construction the amount of places available for children to just play is shrinking and i think that's very very sad and dangerous uh, i can't imagine what this reality will be 15 20 years from now in these big cities unless we reimagine our cities and take drastic steps today so basically prevention has to start from an early stage as dr kaparia said and this other common issue which is not only talking about heart disease but the well-being in general has to be addressed by the urban authorities for the general well-being because it cannot be only advised by medical practitioner or a few people but and at the macro that, level uh, to uh, our elections also have to focus on focus things which on. matter rather than things which don't matter i mean ah. uh, i don't want to wish to specify what ah. yes. but if you look at the uh, american elections yes where the 18% of their gdp is spent on health yes. of, of a multi trillion dollar economy very often the debates about healthcare here uh, you know uh, yeah, okay. our 1.5% gdp on health and we discuss things which are totally irrelevant to yeah. our day to day life correct, correct. true is so that true i mean it's appalling to me so that's a very important input for the prevention of any disease yeah, anything to add sir yeah you see the what what is really very disturbing is that in our uh, central cabinet the health portfolio is given is, is not given at all any importance health and education which are mm. most important are relegated to the last person you know if a, if a very very able ias officer has to work with the health ministry and somebody has to work with the you know the fo the foreign uh, ministry then he would think that that fellow is a uh, much better place than what i am so know, it's the perception so it's the perception and and of course we have not given importance as doctor said to health and education which are and actually what i have noticed in united states for last 50 years that people care for health and education more than any foreign policies or anything like that and an average person in united states really vote for his own health and education and has his daily life you know in fact the real estate value uh, of a locality to a large extent is dictated by the quality of schools in the locality quality of schools true yeah, the social determinants are very very important i would agree with you yeah. for example even this pollution which is occurring in the atmosphere we are one of the worst uh, in the whole world now yes this pollution should could be controlled by the authorities and all even these uh, roadways this noise pollution itself yes. if you have colonies uh, around that yeah. if there is a noisy uh, uh, neighborhood it also increases heart these are all been shown playgrounds have gone i think the government could do a great do but i think the people have to be aware of it only then they can for example bad things in the diet could be labeled trans fats could be labeled it's bad just like uh, cigarettes have been uh, uh, labeling has been done but it has not been done on the chewing tobacco and it could be done and all i think the public awareness has to be there and as he said the uh, uh, locality's price should be determined by the health uh, infrastructure that they have True. so if could government could maintain the parks i think heart disease will come down because exercise fact, is a very important thing secondly pollution could come down noise pollution it will if the neighborhood yeah, is air also pollution and noise pollution yeah, both is a very very important thing people who are staying near the highways where the noise pollution they get more heart disease and uh, air pollution you know is a very very important factor not only for the lung disease but for the heart disease 30 percent extra deaths are occurring because of this noise pollution true sir i think it's very lack of, something lack yeah. of uh, playgrounds is causing quite a lot in delhi uh, there used to be a lot of cycles earlier yes. you hardly see a cycle so we must really fight for the cycle tracks it's possible in many country if it is there in our country i think it will come down Oh, basically, I like to just add one thing. Please, is the most dangerous thing now that I see because there is no medicine for that. Yes. If somebody is a high cholesterol, high blood pressure, we can treat it. And people don't think it's a disease. For example, I was going for a walk in my park, and there is a lady with a very fat child. I said, "Why the child is uh, unhealthy?" He said, "No, no, he's a healthy child. The impression is that obesity is a good thing; should go. Uh, so that's also wrong perception. Very, very bad. It's a perception should go." and this is again i think programs like this can tell you if your child is overweight this is because of lack of exercise and watching too much tv and lack of awareness also yes too uh, if the child spends 2 hours on the computer or tv it is like smoking 6 cigarettes now okay. it's been shown now okay. so the patient uh, parents should be aware 
that if they don't make their child exercise, they are almost... So a that, that's a good observation. Uh, Dr. Balakrishnan, you are saying it's, something. It's, I, I think it's also very simplistic to think that by taking one type of oil or one tablet, you can prevent anything. No, it's it's a lifestyle yeah, change. Yeah. Yes. And to a large extent, as I said, lifestyle is also dictated by the reality of the society we live in. Dr. Kapadia, yeah, you're yeah, saying something. The last thing I want to say, as I say, emphasize, that our <laughs> policy makers, they are the politicians, actually, yes. their role. I should think that after the Prime Minister and the Home Minister, the Education Minister and the and Health, the health minister, minister should be the most important. Be the important thing. And then I tell you, it will change the whole scene. That because, you know, we have least competent person put into this thing and least important thing. And then we talk about all the hygiene and all that. And most yeah. of our the schools don't and have playgrounds. No, enlightened yes. public could make them. Yes. The politicians it, it change is the, the Enlightened public, public is very important. Yeah. Because public will uh, say vote on the health issues. It is very important. So yes, enlightened exactly. public is very important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So coming back to our topic of heart diseases, Dr. Kaparia, uh, what in, in your opinion is crucial in bringing about a successful outcome in the treatment of coronary heart disease? Well, you know, we have now understood coronary heart disease is uh, the causes of coronary heart disease and the treatment. And the treatment, I'm very happy to tell you that over the years has become more and more and more and more effective. And uh, in an expert's hand, you know, the treatment itself will make a great difference. but the way in which we give the treatment. The part of the treatment is the communication with the patient. And that communication skill we never teach in the medical schools. We are not, uh, again we come back to the same subject. Yes. That how, who we give the importance of communication. In our medical schools we never teach communication. And communication is the most important aspect between a doctor and a patient. Which I found in, 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 in UK and which I have been practicing all the time. And I find that a right communication will heal the most complicated patient, most complicated, the right communication. So now we have a armamentarium, okay. has to be accommodated by, by the good communication. And the stress management, the stress is a part of the life now, yes. part of the life. Uh, and, but that stress, all stresses are not also not harmful okay. because it's a part of life. But how we deal with the stress. Yes, that's now, very important. Where, now that name with universal healing program and name attached to my name and all that, that I think is unnecessary. What is important is we have to learn how we connect with all the other people. And we can connect all the with the other people because we have got only one thing common in all of us. Sitting here, one thing common in all of us or rest of the universe. One, com one common thing, our bodies and mind they are different with each one and we have got different things to do. But we really forget that our body and mind which are so important and which we live are really alive and kept going by only one thing and that is the breath. And the breath, the good Lord has given us that habit. The supposing if I had to talk to you only after breathing for half an hour, then it, the life will be miserable. But when I'm talking to you, I'm breathing and you're listening because yes. you are breathing. So let us learn what I have learned, you know, from this program. Okay. That if we learn to be one with our breath for 10 minutes twice a day. Okay. And to become one with the breath, we have to quieten the body and mind. Okay. And body and mind, you cannot quieten mind, is like a monkey. So we can quieten the body. And the mind is present in every cell of the body, as Hippocrates said, our father of medicine. So if we relax the body, then the mind will automatically relax. But it's difficult to relax the hand or relax the body. So if we can stretch it comfortably for a while, only comfortably, yeah. and then relax the relaxation will be better. So we we taught that principle of stretching and relaxation. Yes. And we taught one important thing in the program. We used to raise the hand in, 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 in PT training in the okay, school. Yes. But at that time it was a physical thing. Now if the person can put this much hand or this much hand, we don't mind. But when he puts his hand up, he should concentrate on the muscles which are being stretched, bringing the awareness to the muscles which are being stretched and which are being relaxed. And do it twice and forget it. That way, doing it from toe to head and relaxing the whole body, 
the whole the, the whole thing the mind automatically relapses so and when the back mind to no, the no, let, let me complete the whole thing yeah. let, let, when when the mind is relaxed like that then you become one with your breath and then no pranayama and no changing of the breath the breath is going on but we were not worry we were not one with the breath you become one with the breath for that time and when you become one with the breath you have to do this mechanically for 6 weeks like program like this and now we are teaching even one minute one minute meditation which we'll talk about later on at when we are okay but when this happens i have found miraculous change and normally a rickshaw driver and all that who are not pandits in yoga and that on knowledge on that they do my program better than all the people who have a lot of knowledge about yoga because they get confused and they get on the and they they learn everything and this is what i learned from that swami sachinanand ji who was a disciple of dr sivanand swami who said that i was given a challenge dr kapadia to teach the hippies meditation therefore i could know how to teach them when they were clothed in any any way they like and all that and i could and when i was successful that way then i could know that we can our bhagwa kapda wala you know he used to say okay. that have done lot of injustice to yoga than anybody else so in short uh, yeah. teaching savasana and meditation in a yeah. more systematic fashion uh, 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 helps in the prevention uh, and coming to dr yes. balkrishnan what is the best treatment for a patient of heart attack with ejection fraction less than 30% it depends on whether the uh, ejection fraction is 30% because of the heart attack in the immediate uh, Uh, acute phase, or he already had an ejection of fraction of thirty percent, and suffered another heart attack. Um, usually, if uh, if the ejection fraction is thirty percent because of the heart attack, and they have come to you within a few hours, uh, you have to have an angiogram and have a primary angioplasty of some kind. And uh, ejection fraction has dropped to thirty percent means he is possibly going to what we call cardiogenic shock. He is quite sick. and the chances of dying are very high so uh, after uh, doing an angiogram and an angioplasty or if angioplasty and angiogram are not possible uh, they are in a remote location away from a cath lab you have to give clot uh, clot busting drugs uh, some kind of thrombolysis uh, as we call it if the immediately the uh, ventricular function doesn't improve and it's uh, is low Uh, then you should look at uh, supporting the heart with other modalities like a balloon pump or something but in any case if the ejection fraction is 30% uh, we would recommend uh, as quickly as possible to shift him to a tertiary care facility where more advanced therapy is possible dr kapadia there is a lot of confusion regarding interpretation of lipid profile reports can you explain <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Again, because yeah. during because of the media Very and the inter, in, increase, you know, interaction among the patients, this has become a little bit, you know, over discussed or controversial. I tell you, it's a very, very uh, <laughs> complicated or naughty issue. I tell you now, and various opinions. And during my practice of more than five decades, I have changed my opinion regarding lipids about four times. <laughs> okay. At one, at one time, I I never even. requested a lipid profile test in the first 10 years of my practice as there there's no, no point in doing it you know and we were treating and because i i had my training in uk and usa at that time the lipid profile was you know done in a just a total cholesterol or something like that okay. and then they took them ldl and hdl and you think that difference also it came came up gradually the first cholesterol lowering medication i don't know what both this doctor will know it was atormi das Atormid came, you know, ICI made it the first one, and they came so much that the BMJ Journal and all that they published that if you take it, then the cholesterol will come down and it will prevent heart attack and all that. My consultant, who is my teacher, who is he said, "We will wait, you know, for some results to come in there." And within six months, within six months of introducing that that Atormid as people became bald, they became they they were developed cataracts and all that. and the cholesterol lowering medications on the very bad reputation all that well the increase incidence of suicide as well <laughs> huh? that was the gem fibrosal yeah. Mm. yeah so then is it on the uh, uh, and to earn back that little prestige for okay. and all of the it took a lot of time and then when it took a lot of time then the question came up of 
various type of cholesterol and then the low density and high, high density, density lipoprotein high density then HDL was considered very protective and LDL is the harmful one. Now what is stands today according to my uh, thinking whether when I visit uh, United States in a very you know uh, renowned institute they give a lot of importance to LDL and even now LDL particles macro and micro particles. If the micro particles are large in number of LDL then they, they try to stick to the wall and make the plaque and the macro particles are not that bad. So, how do you, so that, that test of finding out macro and micro particles a little expensive and not easy. So, now they my uh, what I learned from them if the LDL cholesterol is lower than 70 or 60 then the micro particles are there and micro particles are less. Anyway for last 10 years I have developed great faith I know I, I may be put to question but at least I have got a large number of patients and I feel that li I, I have now been convinced that if I keep their LDL cholesterol below 60 then chances of recurrences are very 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 almost nil almost nil with and, and lower the LDL better the prognosis and I have used statins in highest dose now in, in susceptible people. Okay. I, I use now 80 milligram of atovastatin. Yeah. Of course, my, my experience with rosuvastatin is less because yeah. it is recent. But both are same, they, they tell me. But anyway, my faith in atovastatin is so much now, yeah. which is quite a different one, that I take 80 milligram without, without having any illness at all. I have never been ill one day in my life. But That's I have started doing primary prevention right from the age of 60. Sure. Because my total cholesterol at the age of 28 was 310 and my LDL was 161. And now, and my brother got a heart attack who was only three years younger to yeah. me. So since then I began uh, aware and I did my coronary calcium score early on. And I found that I had a plaque rising in two of the arteries. So since that time I've started taking treatment for blood pressure and keeping my LDL cholesterol with very great effort diet, diet as well as 80 milligram of atovastatin now. And another thing which is very important and I want to tell the doctors here as well, as you know the placebo effect, placebo effect yes. that, that something given by the good doctor the patient gets well. But now there is a nocebo effect and nocebo effect is prevalent in atovastatin. People think that atovastatin you get the muscle pains. So as soon as you give them muscle uh, atovastatin they get the muscle pain. It's so much advertised. But as a matter of fact, people who require atovastatin, I have got ample proof that they don't get muscle pains at all. And even high dose of 80 milligram, and I am taking 80 milligram, there is no question because I know it, I require it. And uh, this I have given in how much patient, how many patients I can see myself, about 10,000. So in last, last few years, all of them are on 80 milligram of atovastatin. All of them, those who had the problem and the other, and all of them, all of them are doing well. And therefore, I don't carry even a card of mine, and nothing of that. But the mouth, you know, from the word of mouth, yes. I keep on getting the people who are getting. So I think I don't know the, what these two experts have to say anything. Yeah, we'll come this to is that. My practical yeah. experience. Uh, before we talk, uh, sir. Yeah. Before we talk. More on statin. We are going to talk no, on that. No, I just want, I'll just like to clarify the yes. LDL, which is there's no confusion now. Yeah, you're talking all about LDL. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the international guidelines say LDL is important. Yes. But for Indian guidelines and uh, uh, in diabetics, it's the non-HDL, which is more important because the triglycerides are high and all these particles are taken. So non-HDL and LDL are important. And lower the LDL, better it is. In a child when he's born, it is about 30 to 40. And now the guidelines are coming that if you reduce it to 40 like a child, he will never get a heart disease. It's Statins it's are uh, uh, useful in certain cases, but now there are new drugs which are called PCK9 inhibitors. Yeah. And okay. these drugs can reduce it to 20, 10, and even then there are no side effects of that. So I think I agree with him. The yeah. lower the LDL, better it is. But I think for Indians, it's better yeah. to have non-HDL because that takes all the particles. It's a very simple test can yeah. be done in non-fasting okay. and that is in the guidelines, all international guidelines. Mm -hmm. We made a guidelines, Indian guidelines for dyslipidemia and we said these are the two important, LDL and non-HDL should be done in all cases. Okay. So, as you said, these are very important parameters and in a country like India where both heart disease and diabetes are prevalent in 
much higher numbers no, compared to better. many countries. Uh, Dr. Manchanda, can you talk about the role of aspirin in primary prevention? Because this is again a debatable question. Yes. <laughs> you see, there is no debate that it is uh, extremely good for secondary prevention. For example, if a patient has a heart disease angina or has a coronary calcification or a atherosclerosis, it must be given. There is no uh, okay. question about it. There is lifelong it has to be taken. Only question is the primary prevention. Should not be given routinely because the bleeding is much more. But anybody who is at a high risk, like he said his cholesterol is high, if you are a family history, then we will give aspirin. So in high risk cases, we give it. Diabetics who have some other risk factor, we give it. But only in high risk. In for primary prevention, it has very limited role. Should not be given indiscriminately because the side effects are much more. The bleeding can occur, although it's very rare, but it can occur and it can outweigh the benefits. So give it for primary prevention if there are risk factors like hypertension, family history, or very high cholesterol, etc. Thank you, sir.